Yes, so my life, I'm going to let my life sing to you, God. My life will sing to you. Yes, how many want your life to sing to God? Yeah. Thank you, God. God, as we, God, as we cross out of one decade into another, may our life sing to you. May you be pleased with us in all our ups and downs. When it all comes out, may our life sing to you, God. Now, God, I'm praying that you would think through my mind, speak through my mouth, let my words be an edification to every hearer. Let every heart burn with the word that you've given through me. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now let's just go through our confession. I'm a part of Deliverance Temple. I'm a part of Deliverance Temple. Where we love. Where we love. By living our vision every day. By living our vision every day. We connect with our creator continually. We confess our deliverance consistently. We, our consistently. we commit to serve creatively. We, to serve creatively. We, communicate Christ's love we communicate Christ's love compassionately. Pastor Andre, Andre. teach me this word. Me this word. All right, so we are in our final sermon of the series called Blind Spots. So we've been working through that, and we'll give you the working definition of that, which is a blind spot. Is an area that is not able to be seen either due to its location outside of the field of vision or due to some physical obstruction or a defect in one's vision. Often used to describe the areas around a car that cannot be seen with their rear view or side mirrors. And the reason why we went in this direction is because we're moving into 2020 and we want 2020 vision. Amen. We want 2020 vision. We want 2020 vision. We want to be able to see clearly. They say that per person who has perfect vision is called 2020 vision, and we want to have a vision for our life. We want to have a prophetic vision for our life. We don't want to just go along with the motions. We want to navigate. When, when the difference between a cruise ship and just a sailboat is a sailboat can be moved by the wind. But a cruise ship navigates the winds and the waves. We don't want to just go through life listless and being pushed around. And when everything is going one way, we go that way. No, we want to navigate through rough waters, calm waters. We want to have a vision for our life, and we want to have a journey. When you, when you pull up your GPS and you say you want to go wherever, X, Y, Z, it puts a dot where you are, and it puts a dot where you're supposed to end up at. And when you deviate too far from the path, it lets you know, uh-uh, you're not on the path. Because if you're going to get there, you can't stay here. I don't, so I'm so glad that my GPS ain't in ghetto. Because it says nicely, rerouting, rerouting direction. Please make a U-turn as soon as possible. If it was ghetto, full turnaround. <laughs> glad, glad I don't have a ghetto GPS. But sometimes we need God to be ghetto with us. Fool, turn around. Do you have a vision for your life? If you have a vision for your life, there's some places you can't stay, places you can't go and get to where you're supposed to be. And eliminating blind spots helps us with this. So in blind spots part four, we uh, dealt with this. Blind spots can happen where tradition meets the word of God. And we took the Christmas story tradition. And we talked about it, and we talked about the Christmas story tradition. We talked about the Christmas story tradition. There we go. We talked about the Christmas. When I'm repeating stuff, I'm like, come on, follow it, follow me. We talked about the Christmas story tradition, and what we're trying to do is find out where the blind spots are, because anytime there's something that's traditional, sometimes you can get caught up in the hype and not really see what God is saying. So we, we worked through that. And uh, I got one more thing that we're going to renew on that. But let me just uh, announce this, Blind Spots Part 5. This is the last part 
of it. But when we left on part four, this is what we left. We left with a declaration, and this was our declaration. Father, I enter this new dec decade pregnant with possibility and positioned for promise. I'll say it again. Father, I enter this new decade pregnant with possibility and positioned for promise. So we closed last week off of that, and we were talking about Mary having the Savior of the universe in her womb. But not only does Mary have greatness in her womb, we have greatness in our womb as well. And we want to move pregnant with possibility. I'm tired of hearing about all the things that aren't possible, all the things that can't happen. Well, you're from Muncie. You can't do this, and you can't, you can't. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm pregnant with possibility. Yeah. I'm pregnant with all the things that can happen. Now, it may be an improbability, but that doesn't mean it's an impossibility. The odds may be stacked against me. I may be dealt a bad hand, but that doesn't mean I cannot do it in this lifetime, in this age. The fat lady will not sing on my watch. There's some stuff I'm going to do in this lifetime. There's some stuff I'm going to have in this lifetime. There's some stuff I'm going to achieve. Why do I know it? Because I've got too much pain. I'm carrying something inside of me. And because of what I'm carrying, there's also some things I can't do. I love roller coasters, but whenever you're lined up for a roller coaster, it says, if you are pregnant, you should not ride this. There's some roller coasters you cannot get on in 2020. There's some stuff you cannot do in 2020 because of what you're carrying on the inside. And I position myself for the promise. Problem with promises, you have to be positioned for them. If I tell you, meet me tomorrow at 11 p.m., I'm going to give you $250,000. If you show up at Wednesday at 2 o'clock, you can't be mad at me because the promise was based on your positioning. You can't say Andre is unfair and God hasn't been good to me. No, no, no. Andre was fair and God was good. You didn't position yourself the way you should have. So not only am I pregnant with possibility, I'm positioned for promise. But that's going to, ending where we ended with that declaration is going to move us right into today's sermon. So let me put this up. Not knowing what's inside of you creates blind spots. There is truth that sometimes women don't know for several months that they're pregnant. There have been people who didn't know until they actually birthed a baby that they had something inside of them. And here's the thing, in this season, in this day and age, you have to know what you carry. You, 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 this is a time where you've got to get to know you and get to know you so well to know what I carry and know what you can be around and know what you can do. The morning sickness, the spiritual morning sickness you're going through, there is a reason for that. Know what you carry and not knowing what you carry creates blind spots. It makes you devalue yourself when you don't know what you have in you. If you have a baking business inside of you, you'll keep going to Kincannis and be like, you know what, I don't even like these cookies but you keep going there and wonder why you're irritated with concannus. It's not that concannus is bad. You're carrying the answer to concannus on the inside of you. And so because of that, you cannot be comfortable in concannus because it goes counterintuitive to your destiny. Once you know what's inside of you, it makes you understand, oh, that's why I feel this way. That's why I don't like him the way he liked me. That's why I don't like her the way she like me. We're not going in the same direction. We don't have the same destiny. It doesn't make him or her bad. I just can't stay with it because I know what I have inside of me. Yeah. Knowing is half the battle. Yeah. Put this up. But watch the enemy. He will show you what you have. Once he does, you have to see yourself as valuable. Here's the thing about your enemy. Your enemy recognize it before you do. One thing they say about eagles is eagles, even though they fly so high in their air, their vision is so tunnel vision that they can see their prey from miles away. The rabbit that's gallivanting in the land, it has no idea it's about to be lunch because it cannot even see the enemy, but the enemy sees it. You can't see your enemy, but baby, your enemy sees you. 
And this is what you have to understand. Your enemy will announce to you how special you are. Because what the enemy will do, he always attacks greatness. And if you're under constant attack, sometimes you got to realize it's not because I'm bad. It's not because God doesn't like me. It's because the enemy sees something in me that I don't see. So this is what I'm starting to learn. I'm going to start valuing myself the way the enemy values me. If the enemy would wake up and try to mess up my day from the moment I wake up. In other words, when I woke up, that's not when the devil woke up. The devil planned two weeks ago to mess up my day. If I make it through the day and I still have my mind intact, I'm going to put myself together and say, you know what? I must be pretty special for the enemy to go out of his way to mess with me. If the devil never messes with you, it's because he already got you. But if he's messing with you, it's because there's something in you that he wants. So you have to start seeing yourself as valuable. Let, let's, let's look at this scripture in, in uh, Revelations 12, 1 and 2. This is something that Apostle covered some weeks ago, but I want to bring it back up again. Would you read it? And then I, I did some underlining and some, some circling because I want to make some reference to it. So, so read. I, I, I uh, circled sign because sign, when I studied it in its uh, Greek, it was saying something could be actually seen. We're talking about blind spots. So one of the things your vision has to your vision has to see your enemy. Read. A woman dressed all in sunlight, standing on the moon, and crowned with 12 stars. She was giving birth to a child, and cried out. All right, the first thing I want you to, to know, and I didn't underline it, but the first thing I want you to know is that woman represents the church, represents us. And it talks about all the light. Light represents life and power. All the light that was around it. And then it says she was giving birth to a child, but child is capitalized. It is talking about Christ. It is talking about Jesus Christ, the righteous. And it says this, and cried out in the pain of childbirth. Even though she was producing Christ, it still caused her pain. Just because you're producing something godly and spiritual and righteous don't mean you won't go through hell trying to push it out. God will give you a vision for your life, a prophecy, but that don't mean everything's going to line up right away easy. It's going to cost you some pain to get where God wants you to be. It will not be easy. It, it will cost you sleepless nights, some blood, sweat, and tears. But you have to understand, if it's caused me this much pain, it's got to be something special inside of me. Now, when I hear that somebody birthed a 10-pound, 12-ounce baby, the first thing I wonder is, I wonder what it cost that woman to push that out of her. But you've got some dreams and destiny inside of you. And yes, it hurts. And yes, people walk out on you. And yes, some days you're depressed. And yes, some days you're confused. And yes, some days you're broke. And yes, some days you're sick. But it's okay. You're pushing something great out of you. Amen. Now, let's, let, let, let's read the next verse. I won't give you all the imagery what that means, but just know this is talking about the demonic. It's talking about Satan himself. Read. With one flick of its tail, it knocked a third of the stars from the sky and dumped them on earth. The dragon crouched before the woman in childbirth, poised to eat up the child when it came. The child is capitalized again. Of course, it's talking about how Satan wanted to, to kill Jesus. But when it comes to you, here's the thing. The enemy can't stop you from pushing it out because you're going if you push, it's going to come out. So what it does, it crouches and waits to kill whatever comes out of you. So it's not only the pain of trying to be what God wants you to be, is once you step in it, it's the pain of fighting all the demons you got to fight to get to where God wants you to be. I'm not pretending that this is easy, but when is anything worth its weight and salt being easy? It ought to be grand. Let me put this up. Always remember the size of the weapons and the intensity of the attack shows you how much respect the enemy has for you. 
If it costs you everything, if it's tooth and nail, there's something special. Yes, God. If I move outside of just the spiritual realm and just the church realm and we just look at natural people, if you look at some of the greatest people in the world, if you look at their childhood, it was horrible. If you look at Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey ran away from her home at the age of around 13 or 14 because a family member was molesting her. And then she ended up having a baby. And then, then the baby came out and ended up losing the baby and all that. And the next thing you know, she becomes Oprah Winfrey. It was the pain that she went through initially that pushed her into the person that she is now. She would not have been Oprah without all the trouble. Maya Angelou, the same thing. She was attacked in her bedroom. She was treated wrong, but she became who she became. Don't you underestimate your pain you've had in your life because it's a sign something special is getting ready to happen in your life. The attack lets you know something. The first time God spoke this to me, he spoke something to me previously. He said, Andre, have you ever seen anybody use a bazooka to kill an ant? And I've said this to you guys before, and as I thought about it, it's like, of course, I've never seen anybody use a bazooka to kill an ant. And I even thought, I've killed an ant with my own fingers. My, my daughter, when she was young, a little ant was running around. She's like, Daddy, Daddy, it's a bug. I said, oh, don't worry about it. Boom. Just with my little fingers and moved it. The reason why, because it's not, it's, it's just an ant. I don't need my nine millimeter for an ant. And here's the thing, if the devil has to bring out all his artillery, you are not an ant. You got to be something if he has to bring out everything he has to get to you. Yeah, All right, read this, uh, Matthew eleven twelve. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Don't worry, baby, it's not just you. From the days of John the Baptist and now, there has been an assault against the kingdom of heaven. And if you are part of the plans of God and you are part of the plans of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven and you are advancing in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, you should be attacked. You ought to tell yourself that, you know what, if I was the devil, I'd be fighting me too because I'm just that good. I'm just that awesome and I'm just that special that... It doesn't make sense for him not to mess with me because I'm too great to be left alone. It reminds me of the story of December 7, 1941, when they bombed Pearl Harbor and they attacked us and they talked to the Japanese emperor and they asked him, why did you bother America? He said, we didn't want to bother America. We wanted to do what we were doing without America, but America was too great to be left alone. But then the emperor said this, and it's attributed to him, is that, but I'm afraid all we did was wake a sleeping giant. Yeah. Oh, when the devil hit me, all he did was remind me of what I had inside of me. Oh, okay, but oh, this is how you go act. Okay, I know what to do. You must be letting me know I'm somebody special. If you're going to fight me like this, here I come, devil. If you're going to fight me like a king, I'm going to act like a king. If you're going to fight me like a warrior, I'm going to act like a warrior. If you're going to fight me like a wealthy man, I'm going to act like a wealthy man. If you're going to fight me like an intelligent man, I'm going to act like an intelligent man. If you're going to beat up my marriage like it's an awesome marriage, I'm going to have an awesome marriage. You are letting me know what my destiny is by the way you are bothering me. But sometimes when the devil bothers us, we think, oh man, God must not love me. Oh, man, I must not get it right. I always get it wrong. Quit all that crazy talk. The reason why you hit is because of who you are. I've, I've been to car shows before. And in car shows, the, the, even the nice, new, latest cars and the concepts, they let you open the door. You can get in it. You can play around and look at all the stuff they have to do. But when you get to the Bentley and Rolls Royce section, there's ropes around it. You can't, no, you can't just get in and touch and everything. Even though it's a car show, you got to look from a distance because of its value. Yeah. And you got to tell the devil, no, you can't get inside my life. You can't mess with my radio, my stereo. Uh-uh. There's a hedge around me. I'm somebody. Satan, get away from me. I know who I am. I know my value. Yeah. 
I'm going to stop being the last person in the world to know my value. I'm going to wake up knowing who I am. I'm going to wake up confident. I'm going to wake up like I'm awesome. I'm going to wake up like I'm good looking. I may have gained some, some extra pounds through the holiday, but me and my extra pounds, we all still good looking. We smell good. We look good. We act good because I'm a child of the king. I'm not putting my head down. I'm lifting my head up. Lift your head on your gates. You are somebody. Stop letting the devil tell you different. And just notice the way he hits you lets you know how he really thinks. This is what he does. He'll tell you, you ain't no good. You're dumb. You're stupid. Your mama was bad. Your mom, all that. But if you're spending all that time to try to tell me this, that must mean I am somebody. Because if I wasn't nothing, you wouldn't have to take your time to come and deal with me. And this is what you have to understand. Satan is not omnipresent, which means he's not everywhere at the same time. So that means when the devil talks to you, he's got to take some of his demons and tell them, listen, next week I need you to work on them. But while they're working on you, they can't be doing this. So that means that he has to plan and put some of his enemies against you because you're too good to be left alone. Amen. Somebody says, I'm too great, I'm too great. To, be left alone. to be left alone. I, I, I was listening to... Uh, Dwayne Wade talk, and Dwayne Wade was talking about when him and LeBron and Chris Bosh all joined up together for the first time. When they first started, the first 17 games, they were 9-8. and eight. They talked about how many championships they were going to win, and they were barely above a winning record, only one game above a winning record. And what Dwayne Wade said is that because we formed ourselves and called ourselves great, we got every team's A game. In other words, they circled the calendar. We're coming to play Miami, and we're coming. So they walked into the games thinking they were just going to automatically uh, win, and they got knocked over. They got hit, and they had to adjust. They realized these folk think we're great, so we got to start playing like we're great. We, we, we got to start pray, playing like a champion. Let's not just talk talking championships. Let's buckle down and start playing like a champion. If you come into my house, I'm giving you everything I got. That's why I still love Michael Jordan to this day. Because when he stepped on the court, he would let folk know I'm dropping 40 on your head today. Before the game started, I'm here to tell the devil, devil, I'm dropping 40 on your head. I, I'm coming after you, devil. Don't you, don't you think you can walk up in my house and just leave? No, no, I know who I am. I got a violent spirit, and I'm coming after you. This is the last Sunday of New Year. Let me take my time and just talk a little bit. I, I heard one story about Michael Jordan that I liked. It, it was Steve Smith. And Steve Smith said that... Uh, they were playing, and Michael hit a shot on Steve Smith. And Michael said, 48. And Steve was like, what, what is he talking about? Michael hit another shot, and he said, 46. <laughs> he counted all the way down until he got to 50. Basically, he was telling Steve, I'm getting ready to score 50 on you, and you don't even know it. But in my head, I know what I'm getting ready to do to you. And every shot, I'm counting down and let you know. And when Steve caught hold of what he was doing, he already had 20 points. And Steve said, I'm going to be in for a long night because this brother is hot and he's ready. Now, I want the devil to think that when he wakes up in the morning and sees me, I'm going to be in for a long night. This brother's hot. This brother is ready. This, this brother is telling me what he's getting ready to do to me before he do it. I don't want no weak, scary Christians. I don't want no wimps on my team. I want some champions with the heart to fight. Don't retreat when the attack comes. Go to the attack. One of the worst things teams can do is when they have a lead to start relaxing. No, no, no. Keep your foot on the throttle. Keep your foot on the devil's neck. Don't you stop because the moment you let up, he's trying to snuff you out. He's been trying to kill you ever since you were a child. Think about the wrecks you got in, the accidents you got in, the sicknesses you've had. He's been trying to kill you, and if you're still living, you better fight him back and let him know he's messing with the wrong joker. Put this up. High value Target. I'm a high value target. Put it up on the screen. High value target. I'm a high value target. In military terms, they have what they call HVTs, 
When they go into battle, like when they're going after ISIS, they're not just trying to hit the ISIS recruits. They don't send a drone over there just to hit a few ISIS recruits. They're going after HVTs, which are high value targets. If we're going to spend all this money to attack, we want the best of the best to kill. And the reason why you've gone through hell is because you are an HVT. You are a high value target. You're not no run of the mill Christian. You're not no puppy breath Christian. You're somebody, you're a warrior. You're bigger than Goliath in the spirit. And the devil knows it and it's time for you to know it too. I'm a HVT, I'm a high value target. I don't mind you coming after me, Satan, because I know who I am now. It makes sense, Satan. You should be doing that because I know who I am. Amen. Let's look at Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my Let's stop right there. I, I circle finally, and the reason why I come to this finally is because this is the final Sunday service of 2019. So once you know you are an HVT, a high-value target, target, finally, what do we do? I have an arrow written out in spirit. And the reason why I wrote that out that way is because I thought of might and power. There's a scripture that said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. What I'm talking about, when I'm talking about having confidence in yourself, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about in your spiritual strength. I'm talking about in the spirit. It's capitalized spirit. I'm talking about in the spirit of God. Here's the thing I tell myself. I ain't worth a dime as Andre. But Andre in the spirit of God, I'm something to mess with. I know that my strength, here's the thing, without God, I'm nothing but Clark Kent. I'm just a Clark Kent without God. But you mess around and let my spirit get stirred up. I step in the phone booth. I come out speeding like a bullet. I, I come out ready to do something because I go through a transformation, not because of me, but because of what I have on inside of me, which is the spirit of God. I could not do this without the Spirit of God. The attacks that I've been under, I would have gave up a long time ago. But the Spirit of the Lord. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a foot, the Spirit will lift up a standard against it. I'm so glad I had the Spirit. And here's the thing what you got to understand. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. It's good for you to go exercise. It's good for you to lose weight. It's good for you to get a degree. It's good for you to get more money. It's good for you to get a better wardrobe. But none of that means anything if you're not dressed in the spirit of God. Amen. After out of anything, I want my spirit strong. The Bible says the outer man wastes away, but the inner man is renewed day by day. So I need my spirit strong. I have to give attention to my spirit. Stop starving your spirit. Your spirit looks like the Ethiopian kids on TV with flies all over it, emaciated because you're saved, but you don't feed your spirit. You need a strong spirit if you're going to make it through these attacks. Uh, there, there, there was a study that came out, and they were studying actual uh, Bible study. Not coming to Bible study, but actually studying the Bible. And so they were measuring it. They were looking at people. They took a group of people, and they were measuring what they saw even in the brain when people read the Bible. What was interesting, reading the Bible one time a week, up to three times a week, there was no significant change. So if a person read it one time, and they read it three times, things stayed the same. But if a person had went from four times and up, there was a huge jump, which lets me know that you need more than three times in the Word of God in a week to even make a difference. But most Christians only get one on Sunday, and maybe I seen some scripture on Facebook. That ain't good enough, baby. If the devil is fighting you like you a scholar, act like a scholar. Get in that Word and study it and feed it. And even though you can't see what's going on, your spirit's getting strong. See, the word of God is like spinach to Popeye. It, it, it puts muscles right there on you. You got to learn how to feed your spirit. And, and guess what? I need an olive oil in my life where the olive oil will come on my spirit. And I had to grab some spinach to say, I need something to fight these demons and fight these devils. Stop going into life with a limited, weak spirit. 
Can you be saved that way? Yes, but you'll be saved and ineffective. Feed that bad boy. Let him, let him grow up. Take him to the buffet. Let him eat all night long. This is what you can do. Sometimes you have to trick your mind. Your mind don't always want to hear that kind of stuff. Your mind don't always want to hear the Bible. Trick your mind. Put earphones in your ear and go to sleep to scriptures all night long. You'll wake up. Your mind may not know what's going on, but your spirit be strong as a rock. Learn how to feed that inner man. All right, let's, let's move on. Thinking you can get where God wants you without the strength of his spirit, it's a blind spot. You, you can't, baby, you just can't do it. It's a blind spot. Let's go to Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the Yes, you're going to be attacked, but put on some armor. Get dressed for it. Next verse, verse 12. If the devil has designed all of that to get to us, why do we think we can walk through life being weak? No, let's be strong in the spirit. Next, uh, next verse, Re Revelation 19, 19. Now, now, I went here because of 2019. I was just thinking about 2019, and so I went to Revelation chapter 19. We start off in Revelation 12. So I said, let me look at 19. When I look at 19, 19, it explained a lot for this entire year, what this year has meant. Read. Basically, all year long, it's been a big squaring off. It's been the devil attacking, and it's been the people of God as the armor of God. We're trying to make it through. We're trying to fight through, and the devil's been attacking. How's he been attacking? He's been killing folk left and right in this city. Folk dying that you, didn't, you, you had no clue they would die. You talk to them one day, by the end of the week, they're gone. It was a rough year for, for, for life and for people going through stuff. And it's trying to wear down the patience of the saints. But here's the thing. We're still an army. Uh, yeah. We may have lost some soldiers, but we're still an army. We're still standing. And here's the thing. It says that the, the, our, our leader, which is Christ, he's sitting on that horse. So, yes, we've come to the end of the year, and we, some of us have been wounded. Some of us have lost money. Some of us have been in the doctor. We've had all kinds of stuff going on in our life. But are you still here? Yeah. Somebody said 2019 basically said, did you die yet? That's what it basically said. I'm going to whoop your head. But at the end of it, are you still here? I remember sometimes uh, my mama would, would whoop on me and my daddy would whoop on me and then they'd, like, they'd be like, you okay? Well, wait a second. I'm the one getting beat. <laughs> hush, hush it up. Quit all that crying. You okay? Oh, I'm the one hurting. But guess what they understood? They understood I was going to be all right. A little spanking wasn't going to hurt me. A little beating up your head because of what, 2019? That ain't going to hurt you. Get up. Quit your crying. You okay? Are you still here? Are you still breathing? Well, stick your hands up and tell God, thank you. You're in a battle. You're in a war. You're supposed to get some shots. You're supposed to get some hits. One thing a fighter knows when I get in the ring, I may win, but I'm probably going to take some shots. Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan till they get hit in the mouth. I'm going to bob and weave. I'm going to stick in a movement. Then you get hit in the mouth and all that go out the window. I'm going on with the Lord. And then you get sucker punched by the devil and you don't know what to do. But pull yourself up. Sometimes you're saved by the bell. And when you get back to the corner, what's the corner? I'm the corner. When you come to the church, I'm your cut man. I'm rubbing your eyes and I'm saying, get back out there. You can do this. You can win this. Get back out there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe your wounds. I'm going to rub stuff on you. What you need to do, you need to duck one time. You need to swing one time. One good uppercut will make it. Get back out there and the worst fighter is a fighter that'll stay in the corner. I don't want no fighter staying in the corner. I don't want folks to say, let me just stay in church. No, no, I don't want you staying in church. Get out there and fight. Get out there and fight that devil. And guess what? You'll find out sometimes he's more scared of you than you are of him. Amen. All right, let's, let's read. Uh, let's, let's go through these things as we move out of here. These are three things you have to see to eliminate the blind spots. So you know, you, you know you're in a, in a war. You, 2000, it did nothing prove it to you. 2019 proved to you we in a war. We all in a war. Even from, from the top of our government in Muncie on down. We FBI raids on now. Everything going crazy. But are you still here? So these are the things we have to see. Let's look at number one. Number one, see this new decade as a shift in the battle. 
So I read to you Revelation 19:19, 19, 19, but since we're going into 20, I was like, let me read the 20th verse. Read the 20th verse. We'll put that up. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that brought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Now this is speaking of an end times, but let's catch the revelation. In 19, there was a squaring off. But by 20, the devil is burning in the lake of fire. He's in hell. So here's the thing. You went through what you went through in 19, but when you rolled in the 20, that devil that was at your heels, he going to be looking up because he going to be in hell burning up. God ain't going to let you suffer forever. You ain't going to go through forever. You're not going to be depressed forever. You're not going to be broke forever. You're not going to be sick forever. You're not going to be hurting forever. It was just part of the battle. But the greatest one that's in the army is on your side and what the Bible lets me know is somehow the one that was staring me down next thing I know he laying on his back the devil that was coming after me is laying on his back sometimes in the fighting scene you'll see people fighting and it looks like one's getting the advantage and they say one of them lands a haymaker and what that means he just swings with all his force but if he connect he can knock somebody smooth out you can look at the scorecard, and they've been losing every single round, but the 20th round. See, he was losing in the 19th round. You took some shots in the 19th round, but in the 20th round, that devil laying on his back, and they counting one, two, three, four, five. He going to try to get up, but he can't get up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You count it out. I'm looking at my deck, say, it's counted out. I'm looking at my sickness and saying it's counted out. I'm looking at depression and saying it's counted out. I'm looking at loss and saying it's counted out. I'm looking at failure and saying it's counted out because I hit them with a haymaker. How did it happen? I don't know how it happened. God got in my fist. I don't know how it's going to change for you, but I know when God stepped in the battle. Here's the one thing I know. The fight is fixed and the fight's not fair. Because the devil thinks he's fighting you, but he's not really fighting you. He's fighting the one standing behind you. And when God wants to step in the battle, the devil can't do nothing about it. I don't care how long you've been hurting. I don't care how long you've been failing. I don't care how long you've been suffering. When God steps in the fight, the devil cannot win. He's going to he be looking up. And you know who's going to be standing over him? The king of kings. And the Lord of Lords, the great I am and the shepherd of the sheep, Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Nissi, Jesus Christ the righteous. He's going to be standing. You know what he's going to do? Here's the crazy thing. Jesus is going to be standing over the devil, but then he's going to take my hand and lift it up like I'm the winner. Folk will be looking at me like, man, how are you so successful? And on the inside, I'm like, I don't know how I'm doing it. Just the last year, I was about to go crazy. But this year, somehow I'm on top and I don't know how it happened. But God stepped in the fight. God stepped in the battle. God turned it around. I'm so glad I worship a fighting God. I'm so glad I worship a warrior God. A God that will step in the fight turn it around. Verse 20, there was a turnaround. So guess what I'm looking for in 2020? A turnaround. Well, Pastor, every year somebody say it's going to be my breakthrough. Every year they say it's going to be my year. Well, what does it hurt to believe it one more time? It, what does it hurt to believe it one more time? You can go and stick your head in the sand and have the poochie lip disease. What's the poochie lip disease? <laughs> Stuff never work out for me. I ain't never going to get married. I got to get out of Muncie. Ain't nothing going on in Muncie. Shut up and get up and fight and watch God turn it around. Stop pouting. Stop crying. Quit with your pity party. It might be a whole new decade getting ready to turn things around for you. It might shift for you. Do you know that Colonel Sanders of the Kentucky Fried Chicken fame, do you know that he was broke in his 60s? looking at Social Security to survive. They said that, that, I think the number's right, they said that a thousand and nine times his recipe had been rejected. 
But in one yes, I don't care how many no's you get, one yes can turn it around. Yeah. One yes, somebody grab that recipe, and next thing you know, you got KFCs all over the world. I was in the Virgin Islands in St. Croix, and there's a KFC in St. Croix. Don't tell me what God can't do. Don't tell me it's too late for you. Don't tell me you're too old. Don't tell me your dream has passed you by. When God turned it around, he turned it around. Not only KFC, but see, Colonel Sanders, when he finally did get KFC, he had a man come work to him with him named Dave. Dave ended up starting what we call Wendy's. It was two major restaurants came out of a man that was failing in his 60s. But when God steps in, not only do you get blessed, folk connected to you get blessed and turns it all around. In 2020, I'm looking for a turnaround. I'm looking for everybody connected to me to get blessed because I stayed through the fight. My God, I got more to go than what I thought. But this is the last sermon of the year, so y'all can put up with me. 1921. Let's just read the next verse. Their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding the white horse. And the vultures all gorged themselves on the dead body. First I said, I don't know how God did it, but I was just lying to you. I knew how God did it. I just need to get you to the next Verse, here's the next verse says, a sharp sword came out of his mouth. Let me put number two up for you. See the word as your weapon. Amen. In order to do this, I want to put this up. I, I, me and my boys, we're, we're big Star Wars fans. In Star Wars, one of the coolest things they have is what they call the lightsaber. The lightsabers are reserved for the, the best of the best. The Jedis and the Siths, they roll with the lightsaber. And let me put about that there's some quotes in Star Wars that have jumped out to me down through the years. This quote I like, this says this, it says, this weapon is your life. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan said that to the person he gave to He said, this weapon is your life. Let me switch it up. This word is your life. Yeah. This, this word is your life. But I, I, I got to get here. I got to do this. I got to work overtime. All that's nice. But let me tell you something. This word is your life. This is your weapon. Yeah. Let me put up the next one. This is something Luke Skywalker Walker said, which is one of my favorite. He says, ideally, a Jedi took many months to construct a single perfect weapon that he or she would keep and use for a lifetime. Once you build it, the lightsaber will become your constant companion, your tool, and a ready means of defense. Once you build it, the word will become your constant companion, your tool, and your ready defense. The word of God will be your constant companion. It'll be your tool and your ready defense. Some of y'all need a Holy Ghost lightsaber in your, in your repertoire where you pull out a word from God. What are you going to pull out? I'm going to pull out, I'm blessed of the Lord. I'm blessed when I'm coming. I'm blessed when I go. I, I'm pulling out the lightsaber of the word of God. I'm going to say, that will keep me in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. I'm going to say stuff like, like uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to say stuff like, with water, with joy do I draw water from the wells of salvation. I'm going to say stuff out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm going to say stuff like let there be light and there was light. The word is my companion. The word is my tool and the word is my defense. Read Revelations 12 11. Jesus did what he did on the cross. That's the blood of the lamb. But the word of your testimony, you need some word in your life. You need to tell the devil, guess what? I know enough word to know you're lying to me. I won't believe it. I can hear. I, I know what the doctor said. I see what the doctor said. But by his stripes, I am healed. The doctors can say what they want to say, but I'm saying what God says. I'm reading about a woman who had a daughter and her daughter was uh had a seizure and before the seizure her daughter was acting funny so she took her to the doctor and they didn't know what to do with her but right there at the hospital she started acting weird and crazy and had a seizure and went into a coma immediately and was in a coma for seven months they said by around about month five they said it's time to pull the plug on her she had been in here for five months time to pull the plug the mama said i don't I don't want to pull the plug. I don't think it's time yet. Move them to another doctor. 
Six months, and that doctor said, listen, it's time to pull the plug. There's no cure. She's not getting any better. She's getting worse. She moved into another doctor. See, you got to find somebody that believe like you believe. The other doctor said, I don't know what we can do for them, but we're going to do everything we can. It said that the girl just woke up. She went in in September of 2017, woke up in April of 2018, and the last thing she remembered, she thought it was still September. But something got in that coma and woke her up because the mama believed God and prayed the word of God. And even though the doctors and the hospital say we can't do nothing for her, when God steps in, God can pull up anything. There's nothing impossible with God. You overcome her by his blood, but also by your word. How much word do you have? Hebrews 4.12, read it. Well, the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged Hold on. It's not just ink and paper or words you scroll through on your phone. It's better than a lightsaber. It's sharp. It's powerful. It's alive. Read. It cuts coming and going. It can get down to the deep part of you. It can take stuff and cause you to be free from all kinds of stuff. You need the word in your life. I wouldn't go in this next decade without some word in me, without finding somebody that can speak a word over me. I need a word from the Lord. One word from God can turn it all around. And the devil just is afraid of you once you have the word. Let me tell you another quick story. There was, I was reading about a uh, snake handler. A snake handler was talking about uh, rattlesnakes and teaching people how to handle rattlesnakes and said, what most people are afraid of is picking a rattlesnake up. I'm like, yeah, I'd be afraid of that too. But he said, that's not the real problem. The problem is when you put it down. Because when you put it down, that's when it's ready to strike. So most new snake handlers, they think they're okay because they picked it up. And then they put it down. They think they're okay. That's when they get struck. Here's the thing. It's not that you're not delivered. The only reason why the devil still hold on you because he's afraid of putting you down. He's afraid the moment you put him, he put you down, you're going to strike and tear his hand up. So he's not holding on you because you're weak. He's not holding on you because he has power over you. He's holding on to you because he's scared of you. He knows the moment he lets up, he knows the moment the addiction breaks, he knows the moment the depression leaves, you're going to wear his tail out. And you don't have fangs, you got the word of God. You spit venom to him. Your venom is scriptures and verses. Your venom is Genesis through Revelation. And the only reason why he's holding on to you because he knows if he ever lets you go I'm tearing you up this is for my family this is for my failure this is for my molestation this is for who lied on me this is for who walked out on me I'm gonna tear you up devil he only grabbing you because he's scared of you number three this is the last one see the devil as defeated he's scared He's so scared of you. He's so nervous about what you will become. He's afraid you're going to go tell somebody how good God is. He, he, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you other than you, you're too great to be left alone. Revelations 20 and 1. So then I decided to go to Revelations 20. Since we're moving into 2020, read 20 and 1. Read 20 and verse 2. Oh, let me, let, hold on, let, let me talk about that old slew-footed, ignorant devil. That old ugly, toothless devil. That old overweight, overgrown hair all beside his head devil. That ugly, nasty devil. I'm talking about the devil and his mother-in-law. Everything connected to the devil. It's just ugly, it's nasty, it's rotten. He stank, he filthy. And I'm tired of him and I'm going to talk about him. You can't talk about me without me talking about you with your ugly, ignorant self. I'm tired of listening to you and your ugly, ignorant self. But it's not just that he's ugly and ignorant, but he also locked up. Read. And, and Satan. Just read the whole thing. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Locked up. 
So guess he's locked out of your life. I know, he, I know he's saying a bunch of stuff. The only power he has left is the power of suggestion. What he's got to do, he's got to get you to do his work for him. So he suggests to you, you need to quit. You need to quit. You need to quit. You need to quit. You know what, Pastor? I'm going to quit. No, 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 no. No, you just listen to the devil. He can't make you quit. That's why he got to keep telling you to quit. If he was so bad, he would make you quit. But he can't make you quit, so he got to suggest that you quit. He's got to show you stuff that makes you think you ought to quit. But guess what? All he's doing is suggestion. And you tell him, you're a liar. you a fool. Sometimes you got to talk out loud to the devil. Every now and then I say stuff out loud, my daughter be like, who are you talking to? I'm like, don't, don't worry about it. And the other time I say, I'm talking to the devil with his ugly self. And my daughter be like, yeah, I don't like him either. Yeah, I'm, I, we, not, don't none of us like him. Get with me, baby. I taught my daughter every now and then she has nightmares. I taught her to say no fear here. So sometimes she'll wake up with a nightmare, run to our bedroom shivering, and then she'll open up her eyes and she said, Daddy, I still said no fear here. That's what I'm talking about, baby. You might be scared, but you still talk to that devil and let him know I ain't going to be scared forever. I'm not gonna, you're not going to suggest to me forever because you're locked up. I see you as defeated. Amen. Romans 20 and 3. And cast it into the bottomless pit and shut it up. Oh, I like this part. Shut him up. Amen. For 2020, all you need to have for the devil is two words. Shut up. Yes, Shut up, devil. Yes, you, you know you're getting kind of overweight. Ain't nobody going to marry you now. Shut up, devil. You know jobs is leaving months and you're going to break. Shut up, devil. You know Trump might get in office in 2020. Shut up, devil. I don't care what you say. Shut up. I don't have to listen to it. I don't have to have a conversation with you. You are beneath me. You're defeated. Shut up. Because the devil, because God shut him up. And so since God shut him up or locked him up, I'm telling him to shut up. He's like a rotten ant dog in a cage. Shut up. Well, that dog can't hear me. You yell loud enough, that dog will shut up. Uh, just try it real quick. Shut up, devil. Shut up, devil. Now, 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 sometimes the devil is in your wife. So when you say shut up, you, gotta, you may have to say that in your mind. You may not be able to say it out loud. But inside, shut up, devil. Read. This is the last year I'm going to let the devil deceive me. This is the last year I'm going to let him trick me. This is the last year I'm going to let him rob me of my confidence. This is the last year I'm going to let him make me think I'm going backwards. I'm getting closer to God all the time, and the devil trying to make me think I'm going backwards. He's not going to deceive me anymore. Shut up, devil. I'm not listening because I see you defeated. Read. That don't mean you're not going to fight him forever, uh, that, that he's going to be gone forever. Sometimes he's going to come back around. But here's the thing. You always are going to win. This is what you have to know. I want, new, I want a new devil. Even though there's not a new devil, I want another level. I don't want the same old stuff to get me down. Well, well somebody blocked me on Facebook. Oh, my God. Shut up with all that. You got to be bigger and better than I want. I want it to be big, major stuff that the devil got to come at me because that means I'm growing to the heights that God wants me to have. All right, keep my live running and my CD running, but I want everybody to stand. This is how we're closing. We're closing with some final declarations for this year. I'm going to say it once, and then I'll say it a second time, and the second time you guys will repeat after me. So let me read it. Come on, put it up. We see ourselves as God sees us. I'll just read it first. We are high value assets to the kingdom. Now repeat after me. We see ourselves as God sees us. We are high valued assets to the kingdom. The next one, we are not weak. We are strong. We are not broke. We are wealthy. We are not defeated. We are winners. All right, repeat after me. We are not weak. We are strong. We are not broke. We are wealthy. We are not defeated. We are winners. This next one is for you specifically. I'm going to read it first. In this next decade, I see myself on top, above only, not beneath. 
ahead and not behind, in the front and not in the back, I see myself in victory. Come on, repeat after me. In this decade, I see myself on top, above only, not beneath, ahead and not behind, in the front and not in the back. I see myself in victory. victory. Let's do that last uh, several parts again. Above only and not beneath. beneath. Ahead and not behind. behind. In the front and not in the back. I see myself in victory. victory. Come on, praise the Lord this morning. All right, let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. This gracious Heavenly Father, yes, we've been in a fight. Yes, we've been in battles. And yes, we're moving into a new decade. But we see it entirely different. We are no longer blinded by the works of darkness. We see how awesome, top-notch, great, and how valuable we are. And our goal is to help other people see the same thing. We're moving with clarity. We're moving with speed. We're moving with purpose towards destiny. No longer defeated by a defeated foe. We see ourselves victorious. Now, God, as we walk into the new year, sure, some things might happen. Some bills might pop up. Things might break down, but we won't come off our confession. We won't say, oh, this is always going to be like it's always been. No, 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 no. We declare victory. We say, shut up, devil, shut up, devil, shut up, devil. This decade belongs to us in Jesus' name. And if you believe it, shout amen. amen.